I'm going to tell you a story, but it's no ordinary story. This is a fangongo. A fangongo is a magical combination of myths, legends, poetry, song, chants, and whatever comes to the mind of the storyteller. Fangongo was told to us before we went to sleep. We didn't have TV, you know, and the power went out a lot. Subsequently, I'm from a really big family. <laughs> As children, we spent a lot of our time outdoors, climbing trees, eating mangoes, falling off trees, climbing avocados, being stung by bees, then getting told off for falling off trees, swimming in the freshwater pool nearby. Dipping our feet into the muddy sea again and again, and watching the mud cloud over until an adult will send us scurrying home. <sighs> Life was grand. Today, I'm going to tell you a fangongo, but there's a catch: you're all going to be involved. Whenever I place my hand on my hip like this, you have to respond by saying, "Awe." So, for example, the story starts, and you all say, "Oh, that's shocking! You need to really say it with a lot of passion." Um, and it's a form of encouragement, so I can continue the story. And if you don't respond, it means you've fallen asleep. So let's start again. Wonderful. But when I place my hands across my chest sadly, weep with me and say, "Oh." So, for example, and then she lost the plot. Fantastic! You are ready for this. So, a long, long, long time ago, on a large volcanic island with lush tropical rainforests. Lion shored with mangrove trees, far inland lived an old couple and their beloved dog. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing! <laughs> okay, <laughs> I need to watch that now.、Um, and they were actually the poorest family in the village. They didn't have much. Like most families, they would rise before dawn and they will start their day with a prayer. Uwa so o na o li o li ne lo u lo to ya Yesu. And then the day would start. The old man would grab his machete, his basket, some leftover food from last night. And he will sit inland with his dog. On arrival at his plantation, he would get to work growing taro, picking the pawpaws, clearing the land. I actually don't do that work, but I've seen it being done. <laughs> so I imagine that that's actually what is done by the man. <laughs>、um, And then, after he does his work, by then the sun would have risen to the top of the trees, and then it becomes unbearably hot. So he would lie down in the shade, have a nap before he goes back home to his village. But one day, when he had done his work, he called the dog, and he would not come running. It was only after a while that the dog came running through the trees. But he's completely covered in white sand and soaked. Now the old man couldn't comprehend how this could be because this region is actually quite dry, and there are no rivers or freshwater pools nearby. There's actually a proverb from this area, which is "Ekali langi vayoa opo," which means you only get the rains from from the heavens, or you only get the water from the heavens. So quite baffling. So the next day, the same thing happened. The dog would come running back happily, 
completely soaked and covered in white sand. And so on the third day, the old man decided to follow the dog. And so he walked and walked and walked, and suddenly he falls and knocks his head. He wakes up a while later, maybe a few hours, he doesn't know, but he finds himself inside a large dark cave and he could only hear droplets of water all around him. He moves his head and he sees his dog swimming, jumping in and out of a freshwater pool at the end of the cave, which is covered with white sand. It was only when he tried to move again that he realized that he's actually tied down with coconut sinnet onto a rocky platform. He was suddenly scared. He tries to move again when suddenly a voice came from the dark. Do not move or you will die. The man was frightened and he said, please let me go. I mean no harm. I mean no harm. Let me go. And out of the darkness where the voice came from, a woman stepped out. But she was no ordinary woman. She was about this tall. And all around her were a thousand more people like her. The old man was frightened and he said, I mean no harm, let me go. The woman said, Nobody knows of our identity, and we want to keep it that way. If you keep our identity a secret, we'll let you go. If you tell anyone about us, you'll be cursed. But if you keep it a secret, you will be blessed. So choose wisely and be careful. So it was only after that that he was duly released. He and his dog ran home so fast. He was really, really anxious, and he so wanted to tell his wife about this strange encounter with this strange tribe. But when he got home, his wife was quite upset. You see, the village chiefs had come over to their home and said that there's a funeral the next day, and each household had to contribute roast pigs, taro, and other food items. The couple knew that they don't have much to give, and the old man sat sat there sadly, and he said, I just wish we had things to give, but we have nothing. And they went to bed sadly that night. The next morning, they woke up as usual, and they started their day with a prayer. Uaso o na o li o li ne. And then they realized something. Outside their home laid an extensive feast of roast pig, taro, fish, fruits, fish in coconut cream, <laughs> fish soup, and lots lots more. They soon realized, the old man soon realized that whatever he wished for, he was granted. And soon he became giddy with choice and he wished for more and more until the village became suspicious, then resentful, and then angry. He wasn't worried. He was enjoying it. So he wished for more. He wanted more pigs. He wanted cattle to graze in the backyard. He wanted his wife to have a beautiful wardrobe. He just wished for a lot more. And then the village had had enough. And they forced him to reveal his secret. In fear of his life and that of his family, he had no choice but to walk them up onto the mountain to pass the plantation towards the cave. When they got into the cave, he led the the group. Yes, there were droplets of water all around. And at the end of the cave, 
is the rock pool, uh, the pool with the white sand all around it. But on the wall was a message. The message was etched into the wall. It said, you got too selfish and now you have nothing. And just like that, the old man lost all of his wealth that he was granted. The moral of the story is, don't be selfish. Be careful what you wish for. My mom's favorite is, there are no little people in caves who are gonna grant you your wishes. But if you work hard now, some of your wishes could come true. My grandma's is, when yam are growing in abundance in the ground and when breadfruits are rotting in the trees, remember you have to store some because there will be tough times ahead. When water is scarce, you need to know how to climb a coconut tree or else build relationships with those who can. The final word that I heard were always filled with intrigue and adventure, and it has enabled and influenced the way that I, my siblings, and many others who grew up to Fangongo have been able to communicate, imagine, and share our own stories. But you see, today I live in New Zealand, and I am surrounded by children and young people who are willing to bring stories alive. I've been able to use Fangongo in my work with young people, irrespective of their backgrounds. And it's humbling to find that no matter where you are, no matter whether it's a classroom in Samoa, Solomon Islands, France, Cook Islands, or anywhere in New Zealand, it's always the same outcome. People just love a good story. So I'm gonna show you a video of the kids telling a story a few nights ago. I encourage you all to give Fang Ongo a go. Obviously set some rules because, for example, no killing, 
um, respect yourself and respect others. And I only say that because my son, the one in the Chiefs jersey, makes every attempt to put a character into an aircraft that's shot down over a zoo that has wild creatures. <laughs> Um, so there's always carnage and endless battles when he's telling the story. <laughs> In a world where learning is dominated by new technologies, fancy gadgets and apps, I see so many children staring at screens, eyes blinking, and I'm thinking of the mystical creatures that stay sleeping in their imagination. There is so much value in communicating through stories, I know it works because every child who has sat in a circle has been able to contribute to a whangongo beautifully. We break down so many barriers when we stop and communicate. My challenge is this. Put down that electronic device, sit down with your friend, your child, your children, and start creating your story. It doesn't require much creating ideas. It just needs you, your loved ones, and a good story of your own. Thank you. Thank you.